Today, we we're going to focus on receiving breakthrough in our lives, receiving, uh, moving forward with God, working with God and receiving miracles in our life. Amen, church? Um, in 2005, a National Science, uh, Science Foundation published an article regarding a research about human thoughts per day. And an average person has about 12 to 60,000 thoughts per day. My guess would be 12, closer to 12,000, that would be men. And on 60,000, probably women. I don't know for sure, but that's my gut feeling. Um, and the surprising fact of it, I mean, I know we're naturally a bit negative human beings, but 80% of our thoughts, scientists concluded they are negative. And that 95% of our thoughts are repeating thoughts from yesterday and from day, the day before yesterday and the day before yesterday and you get the point. Most of our thinking are not new but it's recycled thinking. It's the same thing that we thought about yesterday and things, things that we thought about the day before yesterday. And uh, in some sense it's it's good but in the other sense it's alarming because if 80% of it are negative then we are in trouble because the quality of our life I believe that the quality of our life is determined by the quality of our thoughts and the quality of our mind Bible says as the man as the man thinks so is he so who you are is the collection of thoughts you are the sum total of the all the thoughts that you think throughout your day you are you are where you are because of that kind of a thinking that you have see I often say this when people come to me and ask me like oh yeah either they tell their sad life story and how things were unfortunate and they're trying to excuse why they're why they are where they are and they can't move forward and I tell them this is that the difference between a man under the bridge that can't provide for themselves that's addicted to substances addicted to things and a person in a white house or in influential positions they're both physically equally the same they have two hands to two feet they have a nose to eyes they have ears they're physically capable of the very same thing but what separates them is this four by four inch box right here that contains your thoughts your thinking and how you approach life and that's what separates a man from a success that's what separates a man from he being in health that's what separates from a, a man or a woman from a certain path in their life it's the collection of thoughts in their mind that's why in uh romans in chapter uh, romans apostle paul writes chapter 12 verse 2 says don't copy the behavior in the customs of this world which is we just read 80 percent it's negative but it says but god transforms you into a new person by changing the way you think you want to be a new person you want to be a different person you got to allow the word of God to change and transform your thoughts your thinking from negative to positive from fear and doubt into faith so that you can be a different person oftentimes people try to apply discipline people try to apply uh, they, they try to make change from the outside in they try to modify their behavior but that's not the way it works that's not how God works with us God first wants to renew our mind he wants to change our thinking he wants to replace our thoughts so then then our life can reflect in physical realm that behavior that 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 mental change God works from outside in not from out, inside out sometimes church works differently even people sometimes even in churches are more concerned about how you look and how you behave more than what you think but just because check there there you go but even just because the church even sometimes approaches these things that way that doesn't mean that's the way God works God works from outside in he works from the mind out and let me tell you something that your mental state and your mindset will limit God's work Holy Spirit's work within you if it's not lined up with the Word of God if it's not according to the uh, to the Word of God 
Let me give you an example. If you're constantly walking in guilt and shame, I'm nobody. You know, God, God doesn't love me. I just, I didn't do good enough here. I missed, I messed up there. You know, I've sinned there. You know, I told God I'm not going to do this, but I slipped up again. And you constantly beat yourself down. You constantly walk in shame and negativity and low self-esteem. Holy Spirit will be limited what He's able to do with you because you're not walking in faith. You're walking in negativity, guilt and shame. Let me prove it to you from the scripture. Bible says that Holy Spirit when He comes, He's going to convict the world of sin. Remember that scripture? But He's going to convict us of righteousness. Let me ask you this. How many times, when's the last time you actually got convicted by the Holy Spirit that you are righteous? Come on, let's be honest. That's what the Word of God, I'm not making things up. Oftentimes we are convicted of our uh, and, and we walk we call it conviction but it's guilt and condemnation and shame and we limit our relationship with God it pushes us away from God that's why it's so important and we must allow the Holy Spirit to scan us as I'm talking today to you and I'm talking that to myself as well we have to allow Holy Spirit and His light to scan us according to His word so that we can figure out and, and find out the things and the mindsets that we gotta confront the thoughts that we gotta remove and replace with God's word and his promises let me hear you shout amen amen amen, amen. see let's go into the scripture mark chapter 5 verse 24 <clears throat> It says this, a large crowd followed and pressed around him and the woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under a care of many doctors and spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better she grew worse. Verse 27, when Jesus heard, when she heard about Jesus, say she heard about Jesus. Everybody say she heard about Jesus. She came out behind him and in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, say she thought, if I just touch the clothes, I will be healed. And immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized the power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around and see who had done it. Then the woman knowing what had happened to her came and fell, on his, uh, fell at his feet and trembling with fear told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, say your faith, has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Jesus said, daughter, your faith has healed you. What is he referring to? Which faith? What is faith? Verse 27 says this. Verse, verse 28. For she thought. And another translation he said, she said in, you, in her heart. She said it to herself. I believe that it wasn't a single thought. I believe it wasn't a random single thought. She thought once and said, you know, let me just go act on it. I believe it was continuous. She was continuously talking to herself that if I touch Jesus, if I came to, if I come to Jesus, if only I touch even the garment, the edge of his garment, I would be made whole. She created that image in her mind and she said, if only I can get close enough, I believe the power of his, his power will touch me and I'll be made whole. I believe some people have to create an image today they have to embrace and receive a thought from the word of God that if only I can come close to Jesus my family will be restored if only I can come close to Jesus my marriage will be restored if only I can get close to Jesus his power will lift up my business if only I can come to Jesus his power will heal my body but I want you to notice this was she thought to herself my question is what are you thinking today what are your thoughts I'm not talking about one one at a time once in a while some random thought pops in in your head I'm talking about what do you continuously tell yourself who do you continuously to profess about yourself which how do you see yourself in the light 
uh, of our situation do you see yourself as a victim do you see yourself uh, as a as a loser as a nobody as a reject do you see yourself as was uh, uh, was a person that had they've gone through unfortunate things in your life in your life that things were done to you or do you see yourself as blessed as highly favored do you see yourself as a person that whatever I touch is blessed whatever I go I, I am blessed whatever I do God is supporting my position because whatever Bible says man thinketh so is he whatever you think so that's who you are as we're talking today and as we're you know every single person in this place you have something you're going through whether it's big or whether it's small there's some people that in this room or those that are watching that you're fighting sickness you're fighting the diagnosis of the doctor in your life there's somebody here that nobody in your family has gone to school or finished a higher degree education and you're fighting against that stigma and against a paradigm in your mind and you don't think it's possible you don't even think that way because you haven't seen it modeled you haven't seen it possible in your family maybe you're fighting the fact that in your life you haven't seen a healthy marriage all you've seen is divorce you haven't seen a good harmonic uh, family with harmony and unity peace and love and that's what you're that's what your mindset and that's why you're fighting against but i want to tell you that there is a way to your to your breakthrough there is a path and Jesus lays it out in his word and that starts with the way you perceive and the way you think verse 27 it says this she heard about Jesus she heard about Jesus she heard about Jesus Bible says that the faith comes from hearing faith comes from hearing and the hearing of the word of God hearing what we listen to what we hear what we feed ourselves daily will determine the kind of thoughts and the kind of mindset that we're gonna have naturally as statistics and and research has proven that as a fallen man as a fallen woman we are prone to think negative we don't have to try to do that we don't have to force ourselves to do that all we have to do is just relax and let our mind drift and it will go into direction of negativity just it happens automatically I wish it was the other way around but it's an imperfect world and and there's there's evil and there's we're broken and that's just the way things are and so we have to put an effort and we have to be intentional and we have to guide our mind we have to guide our thoughts to apostle paul says to think on the things that are godly that are honorable that are noble that are pure that are holy if we if it was just an automatic then apostle paul wouldn't tell us and would not uh, commend us to think on those things and the other place apostle paul says that we have to take our thoughts captive and submit them to Christ taking them captive that sounds like a war that sounds like a struggle that sounds like a fight and doesn't sound easy so that means we got to be actively engaged but where do we start we start today we're talking about a path to breakthrough in your life okay where do we start we start by the way we start from what do we allow to get into our spirit what we listen what kind of songs we listen what kind of messages we listen what kind of word what kind of news do we allow get in inside of us for some of you practically speaking that means that you got to cut out some friends in your life because they're just no good they're speaking negative in your life they're not bringing you up they're on the opposite pulling you down it's like um uh, I heard this ter uh, terminology I don't know if it's true so if it's not true I'm sorry but made sense to me crab in a bucket uh, uh, mindset is that when you put one crab in a bucket it will it will it will uh, climb out of it by itself okay crab like you know those things I'm like looking at some of your faces and you're confused not crap crab okay sorry my when I get too excited my accent sometimes slips up 
It's like one time I said fog and people thought I said something else. <laughs> a lot of confused faces in the church. Uh, but crab in the bucket, right? If you put one crab in a bucket, it climbs out of it. But when you put at least two or more, as soon as one starts climbing up, the other one keeps pulling it down. As soon as one starts climbing up, the other one keeps pulling it down. And as long as there's more than one crab in the bucket, none of them escape. Okay? Some of you practically, that means you got to get rid of certain things in your life. Things that keep constantly pulling you down. Things that constantly drain you. If it's, if it's friends, come on, let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. I feel it, huh? You got to cut out secular music. You got to cut out negative things out of your life. You got to surround yourself, practically speaking, surround yourself with godly people. People that are going in the direction that you're going. People that want to make something of themselves. People that want to grow. People that want to take a next step in their career, in their business, in their life, in their spiritual walk with God. You can't just hope and wish that someday, somehow, somewhere you're going to end up where you want to be without making a practical step towards changing your mind. And it starts by what you receive. This is the reason why every service we have two, three, four testimonies to share God's goodness, to, see, to share with you what God is doing. And when these testimonies are going on at church, I encourage you, listen to them absorb them because it's what's God what God is doing if he's doing for somebody else he can do it for you those moments even if God healed somebody's pinky we rejoice with them we're glad that God did it because if he can heal a pinky he can heal an arm if he can heal an arm he can heal the rest of the body God is no respecter of a person and there is no small or my uh, small or big thing for him and so when when testimonies are going on it's a great opportunity to align your thinking to put yourself and direct yourself into the direction of God's promises and God's word. Victoria's life is not a life in accident. You don't stumble into a life of victory. You don't stumble into the life of good health. You don't stumble into a successful business. You don't stumble into a successful marriage. It takes work. It takes taking your cap, uh, thoughts captive and directing it towards the godly things, the good things positive things the word of God see because your thoughts your thoughts they produce your expectation what you constantly think on you begin to expect you begin to anxiously await for it you begin you begin to draw it to yourself that's what Bible says it's not I didn't come up with it and all of those other teachings out there about positive thinking and about uh, uh, about uh, you know directing your thoughts all of this stuff um, they all took it from the Bible I mean they put their own spin on it but Bible has talked about it from before they were around God said to Joshua he said meditate on my word day and night and I will make you I'll give you a good success that predates way anybody in any other religion that we know of God will work in your life through the channels that you will give him in your mind that's why you will see some person in one area of their life they'll be successful they'll have good success but in other area they're struggling because their mind might not be renewed in that area now I'm not saying it's just just because you're struggling, you're going through a season in your life, that means you don't have faith, you, 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 know, you don't have a relationship with God. No, that's not what I'm saying. We go through seasons, we go through things, but I'm talking about mental state. This woman, she had, she was hemorrhaging for 12 years. Yet you see this woman going from doctor to doctor, from place to place, seeking solution and and every place she went unfortunately gave her a negative diagnosis bad diagnosis and unfortunately it didn't help her but one thing about this woman is she did not give up looking after 12 years and after spending all of her resources and the day came that she heard that Jesus is giving out different type of types of diagnosis that Jesus has a potential he is able to heal her possibly of her disease 
and she pursued that she directed her thoughts that way and she pursued and she went and she put herself in a harm's way because women at that time especially when they had a bleeding problem they were not allowed to be in the crowds they were not allowed to be around around men of that culture and so she went after Jesus but it, it's, it's, it was right here because in her mind she was already with Jesus for however long the period of time she only acted upon the continuous thinking that she had that she was doing your thoughts they produce your faith your thoughts they produce your faith they produce either faith or fear they either produce courage and bravery or they produce doubt and cowardice your thoughts either make you feel, in your thoughts you either you either hold and your peace at peace or, or in constant anxiety that's why apostle paul says that we have to brittle our thoughts we have to put a brittle on it we have to break them in we have to conquer them and we have to submit them to the word of god a man of God once said that to the degree that we think the thoughts of God, to the degree that we, we think the thoughts of God, is to that degree that we will walk in the power of God. We will walk in authority of God. We will walk in perfect health and healing and breakthrough in your life. It's not the occasional thoughts. It's not just the thoughts that come once to one uh to a service like this and i get pumped and excited and i do it for one or two days and then i'm back into my own way and own pattern of thinking but it's continuously consistently feeding yourself so that you can think on those things as apostle paul says on things that will bring you to your perfect health and things that will bring you to your breakthrough and things that will bring you to your healing things that will bring you to a restoration of your marriage amen church amen 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 thoughts they produce expectation and expectation that it draws it, it it breeds miracle whether it's a supernatural supernatural good miracle or a bad miracle i heard the story of one one woman that was testifying and <clears throat> her case was that that in her family people um when they were giving birth they were they were experiencing they were they were experiencing problems during birth and they would have c-section and there are some of them that actually died during uh, c-section because there were some complications and so she developed she developed fear that if she if she were to get pregnant that she would also have c-section and that as she continued to th think about it and give a room and give room for those thoughts and meditate on them she began to fear that if she would have c-section that she would die and so um she got married and then um she was kind of trying to not have kids for as long as she could and eventually that she got pregnant and um and she was afraid of c-section and then of course what she was expecting came upon her when it was time to deliver there was complications they couldn't she couldn't deliver uh naturally they were doing a, they were doing a c-section and as as she was expecting there was a lot of complications in her body and she was bleeding out and she was about to die but at that point she was already saved and was going to the church and she heard a similar message but she didn't give much thought to it back then and in this at, on, on laying on the on operational table as doctors were trying to save her life Holy Spirit reminded her of the message and said the reason why it's happening is because you have that negative faith for it and it's happened to you but if you partner with me right now I'll give you the faith and I'll bring you through it and she began to reject the thoughts of death she began to reject the thoughts that she will die and she will not be able to <coughs> live and she partnered up with the Holy Spirit and she said she felt like the like this heat like this warmth Holy Spirit came into her body all of a sudden her bleeding problems stopped right there doctors were surprised uh what happened and, and and then she healed up well and she lived and she did not die and then she had as, uh, as she had that experience with the holy spirit the holy spirit went even further begin to break down that fear of giving birth again and she conceived once again 
and she gave birth and she gave birth naturally then she conceived again and again and she had four children after that that gave, she gave birth naturally and there was no complication the difference between the first time and the last four is she partnered up with a different spirit she engaged with work she engaged with the Holy Spirit by her faith and Holy Spirit brought the promises through in her life in Jesus mighty name You know, Sincerian in the Bible, I don't know, Jesus marveled at his faith. As he came to Jesus to ask that Jesus would come and lay his hand on his servant that he cared so much about so he would be made well. And then as they were walking, I don't know what he was thinking. And my guess would be that that wasn't his first impulse or thought. I'll, I'll bet you if he had got to ask Jesus for such a thing as send your word, and heal my servant I bet you that he thought about it a lot more beforehand and he says Jesus send your word nobody has asked for uh, for that before and Jesus was Jesus marveled at his faith he said send your word and my servant will be healed that Jesus had to stop everything get everybody's attention and said this man has a special kind of faith it was his mindset he says I tell my servants it's his level of thinking was on a different level he said, I know how the word works because I practice it. I know what it does. Now you do what I do with servants, you do it with your word. And that's what sets certain people aside from the other, from the other person. There was a, another story was, there was um, two men. One was very successful and one was in and out of jail and uh, criminal background, heavy drinking, addicted to drugs and uh, children from different people, marriage a couple times fell apart. Just, this life is not, wasn't, wasn't put together. And they came and asked him, listen, why, what, why do you think your life is the way it is? And he said, I know exactly why it is. It's because of my dad. It's because he was drunkard. He beat us. He beat our mom. He was abusive. He spoke negative things over my life. He was never there. He didn't provide it. We had to provide for ourselves from early age. And he went on and on and on just vomiting this disgusting nasty things adding a few colorful words. Why the way, why he is the way he is. And he was right. He was true. That's exactly what happened to him. But then they also interviewed another man that was very successful, had a, had a, had a, uh, was an attorney, had a lawyer degree, had a life, had a good marriage, had good children, a uh, very reputable man in the community, just had his life put together. And Tuzad was his brother. So they asked him, why do you think you are the way that you are? And he said, because of my dad. So, you know, they, they, they marveled because, well, hold on, don't you guys have the same dad? And didn't you guys went through the same thing, the abuse, neglect and this and that, all that? I said, yes, we did. But I made a decision in my mind. I, I've directed my mind towards not to ever be like that. And so I made different decisions. I've gone through school. I stuck through school and even though it was hard, I, 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 I made different choices and today I enjoy a different life. Two men went through the very same thing but have two different outcomes because where they directed their thoughts toward. And so today the Word of God calls you to think on things that are honorable, on things that are pure, on things that are noble, on things that are good. Bible says to meditate on His Word day and night and you will find great success. Pick up a book of Proverbs, read it one chapter a day, learn principles of God that you can operate and work by. Your life will never be the same begin to meditate on the principles and, uh, and precepts of God because those they will establish your life and they will make you an honorable man, an honorable woman. They will bring health and healing to your body. Bible says He sent His Word and healed their diseases. His Word will heal your body. He will restore your broken marriage. He will restore your family. He'll bring your kids back home. He will elevate you in a business. He will elevate you in your career. If you allow His Word to direct your thoughts. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today God is calling you to check your thinking. Check, check the, 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 the continuous patterns of thoughts that you have. You know, that's something that Holy Spirit revealed to me many years ago. I said 10 years ago and I've been in work in progress since then working on my mindset 
and Holy Spirit one by one will be removing different strongholds, removing different patterns of thinking in my life and working with me. You know, at some point you kind of get to a certain degree that you feel okay about yourself. You know, I'm not too bad. I'm not too negative. You know, I'm not too... And so, but there's always more room to, to grow and Holy Spirit only works through our thinking, our mind. It's a material that we give Him to put our life together. And just you know a few weeks ago as I was reading the Word of God, reading the same story, I know this story by, by heart. I've heard it for 20 years of my life and, and then this verse stuck to me once again. For she thought and that thought changed her life around and that thought changed her destiny and that thought, thought removed a limitation in her life and that thought brought her back to her family. That thought restored her marriage and intimacy in marriage in Jesus mighty name. The thought that you choose to embrace will determine where you go. In the story of Achan, he chose to, he chose to hide the clothes that God said that doesn't belong to him. But action never precedes a thought. It always comes a thought. And you think long enough on it? And then it spills into actions. That's how we work, right? And so when Achan, when his first thought came to him, you know, we're conquering the city. There's a lot of beautiful clothes. There's a lot of gold and all this stuff. But God said, don't touch it. And instead of rejecting the thought and said, God said, and this for, this for I won't do it. He began to entertain the thought over and over and over and over again until the thought spilled into action. And he hid the clothes. He the Bible says the beautiful garments, the gold and all that under his tent. And then what he hid came to bite him back. He lost his life, lost his family, lost all his possessions. Because the thoughts that you choose to hide, the thoughts, the thoughts that you choose to cultivate in your mind will either, will either bring you to life or bring you to distraction and there is no middle ground in the new testament you say it's an old testament in the new testament let's go to the new testament ananias and sapphire apostle, uh, apostle, uh, apostle says why did you let satan to put a thought in your mind to lie to the holy spirit to lie to the man of god and that thought being in a good place in the church doing a good thing they gave up most of their possession they just kept a little bit more than they said but they embraced a wrong thought they let they plundered on it and it destroyed them and so our thoughts what we think what we meditate on who what we do matters and either limits us or pushes us forward. There was a man, <clears throat> there was a man, uh, his name was uh, in, Port uh, in Portuguese, uh, Rafino Borrego, if you guys can put, it, put up the picture. When he was 13 years old, he was diagnosed at the Lisbon Hospital to have an incurable mas uh, muscular dystrophy. And for next 40 years, he was confined to a wheelchair. In 2010, one neurologist realized when he was for a checkup, he realized that he was misdiagnosed for the last 40 years. He gave him new diagnosis. Turns out that that sickness that he had was very much curable with a, a widely available medicine, small dose of medicine and some physical therapy. After months of physical therapy, this man began to work for the, walk for the first time in his life. And now it's been 13 years since he's been walking and taking care of himself. But what stopped him and what limited him, what put him in a wheelchair for 40 years in his life, was that he heard that his disease is incurable and instead of fighting going for a second opinion third opinion fourth opinion instead of looking for a solution here and there he said the wheelchair will do today i wonder as this man was confined to a wheelchair limited access limited mobility limited life limited relationships I wonder today how many of us are mentally in certain area are confined to a wheelchair. In the area of education, nobody has gone to school in your, in your family. So therefore you're not even pursuing it, you're not dreaming about it, you're not thinking about it. 
in the area of your finances always lack never progressing never moving forward always working minimum jobs in the area of your health in the area of marriage you know constantly seeing divorce and just you know walking with that negative and broken mindset always expecting bad things to happen always expecting something terrible to happen breakup to happen divorce to happen children not doing good and whatever the area in your life might be but that's what I'm wondering is that in which area in your life right now you accepted the wheelchair you stopped looking for a solution you stopped fighting for breakthrough that thought already built a stronghold in your mind and you're not expecting anything good to come into your life because remember what we said our thoughts they produce expectation and expectation it draws that thing that you're expecting we must constantly allow Holy Spirit to work with our mind and our mindset let's we're talking today about path to your breakthrough so first thing first step is we have to watch what we're thinking uh, what we're listening to we have to watch our intake we have to meditate in the Word of God we have to allow positive messages we have to allow Word of God to podcast sermons worship that we cultivate a right type of mindset second thing that we have to do write that down is the way it starts is with single mind a uh, single thought you introduce a single thought it first starts with a single thought doesn't matter how overwhelming that area in your life is how overwhelming the feeling of regret feeling of uh, feeling of loneliness feeling of rejection you can overcome it and the way you do it is you start by introducing one thought positive thought promise of God the word of God a good thought a noble thought in that area is that I'm not alone Holy Spirit is with me I'm not afraid though I walk to the valleys of shadow of death he's always with me that I am not rejected I am accepted not only accepted Jesus Christ died for me to receive me he paid the highest price for me you begin to introduce a single thought of a promise of God and then you begin to embrace it you begin to repeat the thought that's why repetition of of scripture repetition memorizing scripture and repeating the word of God over and over again so many testimonies so many people that received healing in their bodies because they've took scriptures two three four scriptures in his stripes I'm healed and even though there's pain persisting in their body they're walking they're building their spirit they're speaking to themselves in the in his stripes I'm made whole in his stripes I am healed they begin to declare the promise of God that I will live and I will not die they begin to declare the promise of God that whatever I touch whatever my hand touches it's blessed I am blessed when I go in and I go out in a city and out in a field my family is blessed my children is blessed my marriage and they take the word and they begin to introduce it and they begin to repeat it over and over and over and over until that word drops into your spirit see when you begin to repeat the thought then it becomes a collection of thoughts you had a did it happen to you sometime when you're, you're mad with somebody right and you wish you could tell them everything that you think I had plenty of it um, and then you know in a shower or you need drive you know whatever and you're thinking like oh I would have said this and I would have said this and I would tell them how terrible they are here and what they yeah, and, and you you're collecting the thoughts you know and you're rehearsing them rehearsing them rehearsing them hour goes by two hours go by, and you keep from and the person said she's like this too so I'm not the only one I'm not crazy so they said it too they see it too and what happens is you keep collecting and then all of a sudden what happens is you get a mindset and you and you don't like that person that's kind of your mindset they view them in negative light anything they do even the good thing they do your mindset sees like questions their motives questions who they are and you don't see them in a good light right right but it works the same way in a positive manner when you take the word of God, when you take the promise of God, when you take a scripture and you begin to meditate and meditate and you begin to add to those thoughts, you begin to add testimonies to it, you begin to add other scriptures to it and you begin to rehearse that my marriage is doing awesome, God has blessed me, everything, we live in peace and harmony and uh, my, my children are coming back home, they're gonna serve God, they will not be addicted to drugs, they will not be, they, they will not be roaming the streets aimlessly and you begin to introduce thought by thought that God God is behind me. God is supporting my position. He's working on my behalf and it becomes a collection of thoughts. That collection of thoughts when you do it over time becomes your mindset.
So now it gets a little bit, when it gets to the mindset, it gets a little bit easier because first three steps, it's like push, pushing a semi up the hill. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes it runs you over, okay? But nonetheless, you keep pushing, you keep pushing, you keep pushing. And then comes this break, comes this spirit, period where it begins to drop in your spirit. And it becomes a mindset. It begins a little easier. You still have to focus. You have, still have to direct yourself there. But it becomes easier to think on the good things. It becomes easier to think on good thoughts. It becomes easier to meditate on God's promises. And you begin to slowly but surely see that you're more positive. You know, you begin to attract better things into your life. You begin to see how God begins to slowly open up the door. But don't give up because there's a next stage. There's actually two more stages. You have to keep working at it until you build a stronghold. Stronghold. Stronghold is when it anchors in your spirit, it anchors in your mind. You know there's negative strongholds, there's strongholds of fear and and those strongholds they, they paralyze you, they limit you. For example we had a we had a lady that came to our church and she got in a terrible terrible accident. The people died in the car when she was in an accident. From there on she had and she was the, she was the driver and from there on she had an absolute she was absolutely terrified and had a fear of driving, phobia of driving. And for many years she did not drive because anytime she gets in the car she gets paralyzed. And it was that incident, it created a stronghold there in her mind, in her spirit. And Pastor Vlad brought her to the office. She said, please pray for me. I want to, you know, I know I'm, I'm an adult. I need to drive and this and that. Pastor said, Pastor Vlad said, you know, I'm, I won't be praying for you because you need to work on your mind you need to first of all open your mind to the holy spirit before before he begins to work in, in this area in your life he gave him he gave her a few verses and one particular verse that god doesn't give us spirit of fear but a spirit spirit of sound mind and um, and so he said take this verse and write it a thousand times for the next week write it a thousand times say it aloud and write it on a piece of paper write it on a piece of paper and when you're done come back here we'll pray for you and you'll be delivered and so we had a prayer line scheduled for uh we had a prayer line scheduled for sunday and this was sunday before or saturday before that happened next thing we know she pulls up to church on wednesday or thursday with her own car driving by herself and we said did you come for prayer she's like no i'm good now why she opened her mind to the possibility of God she renewed her mind and a spirit and a stronghold was broken in Jesus name it works similar in positive as it is in negative when you begin to build a mindset when you maybe you're sick in your body but begin to thought of the thought you begin to fight you begin to proclaim I am healed by his stripes I'm healed he sent his word and he heals my diseases and you begin to quote the scriptures you begin to repeat it over and over and over and over and over again until it becomes your mindset then you know even though maybe you're still feeling that pain in your body but you already squared up your shoulders you had lifted you walk in with confidence knowing that God has your position and then and then and then the strongholds begin to shape stronghold is a is a dwelling place it's a it's a house if I can put it that way and and then what happens that God the Rafa begins to come in and heal you because there's a place for him to abide in. Holy Spirit comes and he takes residence in your body because there's room for him to dwell in. Let me tell you something that even demons don't like desert places. You hear what I said? Even demons don't like desert places. They want strongholds. Okay. In the Bible Jesus said when the demon is cast out of the house and the house is swept clean, the demons they go roaming in desert places and dry places but they can't do that for too long. They come back looking to get back in if the house is not occupied. Let me tell you something, Holy Spirit doesn't like desert places either. He doesn't like empty places. He wants a house to live in. He wants a place prepared for Him in, in your mind. And the room that you built for Him he, he will eventually occupy and he will be the Lord of it of, over that area over that over whatever area whether it's health whether it's business whether it's finances whether it's family the room that you build for him and your mind a stronghold he will occupy in the same sense like I said 
the devil and a, and, and, and a demonic spirit still work. We, we have prayer line deliverances every single service. We pray for people for deliverance on different occasions throughout the week. And there's one thing you will, you will, you will know if, uh, that a person that is oppressed by demon usually has a stronghold and a mind that allows the demon to dwell in, abide in. Whether it's uh, abuse, neglect, rejection, whether it's uh, some kind of a um, trauma that happened to them, whether it's negative experience, whether it's a failure after failure after failure after failure, it creeps in our mind. We begin to play it over and over again. Then fear begins to dominate our heart. Well, 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 what if it happens again? Well, what if it's going to come to me again? Well, my mom died out of cancer at the age of 53 and now I'm afraid that I, you know, that, that, that I will have that the same thing. And then that spirit, when, when you learn enough, begin to cultivate that fear, that loneliness, that rejection, that, that victimized mindset, then when the place is prepared for that demon, he comes and he dwells on it. And now the problem is not only on a mental level, now you have a spiritual problem that you need deliverance from. And so today I challenge you church. As I'm talking, I know Holy Spirit is revealing areas in your life where you defeat it mentally emotionally where you drained where you give up and you don't you know you're you're done trying you're done trying to find a different diagnosis you're done trying to find a different remedy you're done trying to you're done fighting that whether it's in marriage whether it's in your with your kids whether it's in your business your career whether it's in your health i want to encourage you get back into the word of god surround yourself with godly people surround yourself with positivity let God's word penetrate your soul build him a stronghold build him a house where Holy Spirit can dwell and work out that answer in your life in Jesus name put your hands together for Jesus Christ every stronghold has an occupant every stronghold has an occupant I challenge you to build godly strongholds good, good strongholds but David says God is my refuge and my stronghold he is my refuge and my stronghold that's why Jesus that's why David says therefore I will not fear no evil I will not fear of the pestilence during the night I don't want I will not fear the enemy trying to plan against me I will not fear I will not feel uh, fear the trap that the enemy sets before me and even if I fall into it I know he will deliver me even if I fail I'll slide back I know he will deliver me I know he will save me I know he will pull me out see a person with negative mindset can't take failure failure is terrifying to them a person that has a godly mindset he says even if I'm captured even if I fail even if something happens to me I know God is able to take me out and like Joseph said that even what people meant for bad for me God took that and made it good the, the reason why I know Joseph wasn't bitter that Joseph wasn't um, victim of his circumstances the reason why I, I I know for a fact that Joseph he, he he wasn't contemplating all these negative things in his life because he was helping to fulfill other people's dream in prison let me tell you something a person that give up on their dreams they will never help another person to fulfill theirs a hundred percent on the opposite you'll see those bitter people walking around oh you, you're trying to yeah I tried that don't bother it's not gonna work Joseph had a different mindset he believed in a dream he meditated on the things that God showed him he said one day I don't know how I don't know when I don't know what's gonna happen or how it's gonna happen but God he will rescue me and he will fulfill his promise God will bring me out he will bring my family out he'll bring my business out he will bring my career out but God is still on the throne and he will do what he said he will do in Jesus mighty name he will do what he promised in my life he will fulfill every promise in my life in Jesus mighty name thank you for watching this content I know this was a blessing to you we would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something you can be notified 
Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.